What is going on everybody? My name is Yuri here. It's been a while, but let's go ahead and get on with it. This is the last officially supported Intel chipset MacBook that is still currently being supported by macOS Tahoe, which is crazy to think because a lot of these MacBooks with quad cores and six cores and even this one, which has eight cores, are still perfectly usable. Yes, they are not M chips efficient wise. They produce a lot of heat. They do this, they do that a lot but that doesn't mean they're not usable anymore. We already know the M chips are so much more superior compared to these Intel machines. But one big reason why I'm still running an Intel MacBook Pro from 2019 with an Intel chipset is this, literally. I mean, you could run Windows on this computer. You could run it natively without having to use parallels, which is really the best part about this computer. And two, you can run anything, you can run Chrome OS, you can run Ubuntu, you can run Linux, you can do this, you can do that. You can do a lot of stuff with this computer aside from just using Mac OS. Now the Mac OS experience on this computer is still pretty decent. I'm not saying it's the best. I mean, clearly it's not with the boot times and the battery life and whatnot, like yada, yada, yada. We already know these aren't really known for that. But overall as a package, the quality of 2019 MacBooks are still pretty solid. The display is absolutely gorgeous. And there's really no denying that the keyboard is surprisingly way better than the butterfly keys that it replaced. I mean, I got 64 gigs of RAM, I got an i9 8 core, which although it's a few years old by now, is still plenty capable of running 4K videos. So, I mean, I use this to edit. I actually just finished editing a wedding video on this computer and it runs perfectly fine. Rendering times might be a little bit longer than usual, but I mean, when you render something, you usually just put it in the background you do something else. So that's not really an issue for me. But overall, the experience of this computer is perfectly fine. I feel like a lot of people just go crazy once they hear something about these computers or the T2 chip going bad. That hasn't happened to me and I'm not really scared because I have a lot of backup drives that is constantly backing up every single day. As well as uh, the storage issues, which they say Apple chose a cheap set of SSDs and therefore they go bad over time, yada, 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 which could be true. Don't get me wrong, that could be true with these machines. So far, I haven't really noticed anything. It's been smooth sailing. Going back to the Apple design, to the Apple engineering, the speakers, the display, everything, the thinness of this computer, those are one of the biggest benefits that you can get from an Apple device compared to let's say an HP laptop or a Dell laptop. I mean, they might be a lot thinner, but they don't have the best speakers or they might be better processing power, but they don't have everything else that this computer has, such as a good keyboard, a good trackpad, a really good display, good set of speakers that are really good, surprisingly. Those things can really, you know, up the antes when it comes to the value proposition for these machines. Yes, I get it. An M4 Mac mini is way faster than this computer, but does it have 64 gigabytes of memory? I have around 50 gigabytes of memory usage when it comes to editing. I mean, I just finished a wedding project and that took about like 50 gigs. It does run quite a bit hot. That's why I got this little fan situation here underneath this computer. So this is one of the downsides of having a computer this old. I mean, 2019, where is it now? It's almost practically six years old at this point. And so you can see that, I mean, the last officially supported Radeon software was November 7th, 2024. That's going to be a problem years down the line. For now, I mean, I'm not a gamer. I don't play games. I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm a very casual gamer. So eventually I would play games like GTA 5 on this computer. But for the most part, this is really just an editing machine. Now, what I'm really curious about the most when it comes to this computer is running Mac OS Tahoe. Now, once I'm on the bootcamp control panel, all I have to do is essentially click Mac, Mac OS right here and click restart and voila, that's it. Give it a couple of seconds. Now you can see that was such a seamless transition to Mac OS. We got Mac OS Tahoe beta 2 right here. Click upgrade now, click agree. And we're just gonna go ahead and wait until this thing downloads. All right, so here's the first look of Mac OS Tahoe on this 2019 MacBook Pro here. Uh, right off the bat, I believe the Mac OS Tahoe version of Mac OS does not have Launchpad anymore. So if you use 
uh, launch pad a lot, you can see it's completely overhauled into this uh, search bar type of look. I mean, you could essentially press this uh, search bar right here. It basically shows everything. Gone are the days for the launch pad, which I'm not a fan of actually. Like, why would they remove that? That was pretty convenient. I mean, everybody has learned to use launch pad the past decade and a half. And so you can see this is pretty off-putting. I'm sure it's gonna take some time to get used to. And I don't think, can you rearrange stuff? Can you rearrange stuff? I'm not sure if you can rearrange a lot of things. Nope, you can't. You can't even move stuff. You can just, you can just click show more and that's it. Why would you change something that's already pretty good? You know? <laughs> we are hovering at an astonishing 20 gigabytes of memory use. There's nothing running on this computer. Why are we running freaking 20 gigabytes of memory usage? That I don't understand. Look at that. 18 gigs, 19 gigs. This computer is idling. What are we using 20 gigabytes for? That's literally re the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And we're idling around 85% with the processor. So not too shabby. That i9 is still plentiful even today. My goodness, this is a good looking machine now with this. It definitely gives that modern look to it for sure. And look at me, go into applications list, go into launchpad thinking that I could easily scroll. Not anymore, completely different. Can I change the wallpaper? Am I able to change the wallpaper here? Yes, I can. So we can change it easily like that with Sequoia and Mac OS beta right here. And oh, look at that. That's a new wallpaper. What? What is that? Oh, whoa. Whoa, look at that. Wait, hang on a minute. I like that. I really like that. <laughs> Wait, that's pretty cool. Wait, that's pretty sick. That is actually a really cool wallpaper. Uh, what else has changed? Definitely the look of the icons have changed dramatically. Uh, I believe if you go to appearance right here, can we change the widget and icon style? We can change it to default, can change it to dark, we can change it to clear right here, which basically turns all of these icons on the bottom. You can see it's pretty cool looking. Uh, if you go to dark, that's normally the dark mode. We get the tinted version right here, which takes a while to load. I'm not sure if that's because this is the first time it's been loaded into the computer. I don't like that one. That one doesn't look too good, actually. Um, yeah, you can change it to red if you want to. If it changes, it takes a while. So that's the first sign of this computer aging, I guess. Yeah, that, I don't like how that takes quite a bit some time to load. I mean, that shouldn't take too much time, right? But it's clearly taking its time to load. I like, personally, I like the clear look. Um, there's menu bar right here, which is, I believe, new, or it does look new. I'm not really sure what are the new stuff on this right off the bat. The control center looks pretty good, actually. I really love that. That looks fantastic. I'm not complaining about that at all. You could do stage manager right here. You got your screen sharing, your focus. So you can even edit this. It is quite laggy, you can see. <laughs> That's quite choppy right there. And I forgot to tell you guys, this computer does not have a 120 hertz display. This only has a 60 hertz display, albeit it's a very good looking 60 hertz display. Let's see, if we add this to the menu bar, does it actually show? Oh yeah, look at that. It does. Uh, let's add this screensaver right here to the menu bar and click. Let's click done and click the screensaver. What does that do? Does it do anything? Or is that, that's just a screensaver right there. Well, well, that's pretty boring. Fades in and out. You can see how choppy that looks. So definitely not a fast experience so far with this beta version, not my first impression. I know there's a big difference with the touch bar right here for the 2019 MacBook and certain M chip MacBooks. Uh, I believe they, they still have touch bar on some M2 MacBooks. You can see it has that glassy feel, yet yeah, it's very, it feels very buggy for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I'm not a fan of this design at all. I feel like, well, I mean, I'm a fan, but at the same time, I'm not a fan. In some cases, it just feels sluggish. Now, this is a beta version. I'm taking that with a grain of salt. Give it a couple of more months. By the time it's officially released, I'm sure this won't be any different than your regular Mac OS Sequoia or macOS Sonoma from previous macOS years. It's just probably for now, it's just 
not a very smooth experience. You can see how there's that glassy look on a lot of the UI right there. And if you scroll down, scroll up, you can see how it diffuses like glass. I really like that. I'm not opposed to that. I absolutely love how that looks. And even though it's a bit on the buggy side of things, for sure, it's definitely a lot more sluggier. I really like how that is. I also like how there's much more borders around certain tabs and you can see the opacity of it. It's such a cool diffusion and I don't know how Apple does it and I'm really not opposed to it. I mean, take a look at this. This thing looks fantastic. And you know, this is one of the best parts about Apple is that how good their UI looks, but some of them just looks very questionable when it comes to usability. I don't know if there's any difference on the trackpad or the touch bar. I don't think there's anything that is different right here. Everything still looks the same. Still a pretty cool feature. You can see that right there. The updates for macOS Tahoe is very in-depth. And so like you really have to go through each individual uh, application, whether it's Notes app, FaceTime, Photos app. Again, my biggest drawback for this macOS version is no launch pad. What the hell is the point if I don't have my launch pad right here? You see that? What am I supposed to do with no launch pad? Use that for so long now, practically over a decade by now using macOS, and then you take out launch pad for me when it's not even, there's nothing wrong with the launch pad. Okay, in fairness, it has stocks and it has weather app. And I believe these are, these just came straight out of um, iPad OS or Mac OS. Anyway, you know what we're gonna do? This is the best solution for this. That is to go to settings and go to target disk mode right here. And we're gonna restart to Windows and click restart. This is the best way to fix this issue. I'm sure within the next couple of months by September or by November, I'm sure this is a way better experience than what it is right now. So far, it is noticeably slower. So far, it's noticeably a very interesting perspective. You see how fast Windows load? That wasn't the case for Mac OS. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's just a quick glimpse of what Mac OS Tahoe would look like on the 2019 MacBook Pro. I like some aesthetics. I like how the touch bar look. That was one of the coolest things I've seen that they still care about the touch bar even though it's been discontinued practically. Other than that, I think this is gonna do it for this video. I do have plans of making this computer run a lot cooler by putting these thermal pads on the VRMs. So that's gonna be on next week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.